Well, welcome back to my studio. And I am working on a new piece today. This is a commission. It's going to be a first anniversary gift one of my collectors is giving to her nephew. And Gina, you've probably, if you've watched my blogs and videos or followed my blog and watched my videos, I've done several paintings for her. And this is for his ne her nephew and for their first anniversary. And this is where they got married. Unfortunately, the day they got married, it rained, so they had to be married inside. They had to have the wedding inside. So Gina asked me to paint the, where the wedding would have been if they would have been able to have it outside. So that's what I'm doing. I showed you my color mixtures for the burgundy roses. We're doing roses again. And they are magenta plus alizarin crimson plus white. And then this mixture has a little more of the alizarin crimson plus the white in it. It's a little brighter because this is the side that the sun is hitting. And so these roses come down. They're just cascading over this archway. And for reference, I'm using a picture of a rose arbor we had in our previous home. And I'll show you that. Those roses are Peggy Martin roses. And they're the ones that I painted in my previous painting. These are, I'm not sure what these roses are called, but I'm just making them burgundy. That's burgundy and, and navy blues are the colors that, that her nephew and his wife, Brandon and Christy, had in their wedding. And so that's, that's the colors I'm using. Now this goes up over the top of the canvas. This is painted on a gallery wrap canvas. I'll stand on my little step stool and do the top of this in a little bit, but first I want to get this down here covered. And we have arms of the, the canes of the roses coming down. Just makes it real interesting. You can see how I can use the corner of this. This is called a bright brush. It has a square end. And you can see how I use the corner of that to make the smaller brush strokes for the flowers. They can come down here. I'm going to let some of them come down. The light's coming in from the left, so I want a darks on this side to stop the light, and then that brings your eye back into the painting. With these darks over here, that keeps your eye from just following the light all the way off the painting. That's another design element that artists use. It's just part of composing the paintings. Now underneath you get more of the greens. So this green is combinations of phthalo blue plus cadmium orange plus lemon yellow plus white. And this is a little bit of just phthalo blue plus white. But you can see how I can use this big brush and really get some pretty small brush strokes. Now this is a mixture of my phthalo blue plus liquid. This just gives me a nice cool dark within the foliage. That, that's the portion that's underneath that arch, so it's going to be darker. I'll let some of this come down in front of that distant lake and mountains back there. That helps to give the feeling of depth in the painting. Now I'm going to start adding some of the lighter greens up here on the front side of that harbor. And then we add some of those here because this side is getting more of the light. And since we're in perspective, this front 
these leaves are on the front side of that and so they're catching more light. I'm just blocking this in and it's hard to show you as I start doing the little detail because I have to get so close to the canvas that I block the view of the camera. So even at an angle. Uh, so but I can I can show you the blocking in process. I don't have to get quite so close. I want some of these leaves to break down over the, the edge here. Now I'm going to start moving to a smaller brush. And using some of my a little brighter mixture. We'll have a little cane of the roses coming out there. And now this is just alizarin crimson plus, or not alizarin crimson plus white. This is magenta plus white. And this gives me a little more of a purpley burgundy. You want variety in your flower colors don't want them all to be just exactly the same. If you look at flowers growing naturally, they, there's a lot of variety within individual flowers. And I just start bringing some of the color in here. Again, some of the lighter greens. Let's bring a cane down clean out my brush. Now I'm going to be painting this magenta and these brighter colors over the green and I have to just put a lot of paint on my brush and then just gently lay it on top of the green. Now we're going to have this break down in front of the, the mountains. We'll bring another one here. I'm going to wait on that. Yeah, let's bring one down here. Yeah, that looks good. And just, it's a matter of coming back, working back and forth. Now I'm going to, again, this color goes up and over. Now we get some of the lighter color here showing, the brighter flowers. I'm going to have to add a little bit of white into that mix, just to make it a little bit lighter. And add a little bit of my magenta into that. There we go. Yeah, that's a little bit lighter. Just to show the highlight. And we don't want these real detailed because they are in the distance. So they, they go back. One of the ways to give the impression of depth in a painting is the more detailed things come forward. As they go back, they become softer, muted, and less detailed. So that's, that's one way to give your paintings depth. Let's have one come here in front. And I want this a little darker back in there. I'm using some of this as some phthalo blue plus white left over from the water. I save all my colors. As you saw when I showed you my color mixtures laid out on the palette, all those little dabs of paint on the left are my color left over from the background. So I have that color that I can go back and pick up. And that just adds interest to the painting. I'm going to have to make my light green a little bit lighter, but 
I want to get this blocked in first. Some darker. Get some darker ones in here. I want this cane to go back down behind the chair. Just again to stop that light coming through there. I've also saved some of my sky color. Oops. And so I can come back in here and make some little sky holes in my, in my roses. Because if you look at, at plants and stuff, they're not just solid and then there's sky. There's, those, the foliage gets thinner and then you get little little air air holes. Little sky holes. Now let's put a few of those little canes out there, those long reaching arms. And I'm just using my little fine liner brush. And it's just Gives me some nice, gives a little variety and, and just those little stems and just makes it look more real. Now I want this cane to come down behind the chair. We'll have another one there. A little bit lighter version of that green. yellow to it. Yeah, make it a little brighter. Okay. And this goes out. I need that to be a little bit darker. But by pulling those into the, the paint, the wet, the, the paint of the sky is still wet. So it makes it very easy to draw these tendrils. This one is going to start out dark and then get light. It may need to be dark all the way, yeah. It's kind of going over dark and light areas, so it's a matter of trying and what works. And do another. in there. Now the trunks, I take a mixture of my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue, plus one part of alizarin crimson, and I just drag my trunks into that wet paint. That's okay if some of that burgundy color comes down. And they're real twisty and turny. So we get those trunks in the around the arbor. Around the posts of the arbor. And I'll take those down behind the, the wagon wheel in a minute. A little bit later. And then I get some real fine ones, twigs and stuff, just coming like so. And let's even use our little smaller brush here to This is the fun of painting this kind of stuff. It's just putting all those little fun little touches in there. So anyway, that's our burgundy flowers are all blocked in. I thank you for watching my YouTube videos. And just today, remember, no matter what happens in your life, you know, we're not, we can't control what happens, the cards that are dealt to us, but we can absolutely control how we react to things. So you can make a decision if something bad happens to you, you can either let it ruin your day, ruin your life, 
or you can make the decision to, I'm going to use this as a growing experience and move forward. So just today, start thinking about things that you have control over. Let the things go that you can't control, but the things you can control, react to them in a positive way. So you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and thank you again. Please follow my blog. The link is in the description below. It's also on the final frame of the video, or the address is. And thank you again.